my name is Grady of This Mormon Life, and with me this week is my beautiful wife, Christy, of Our Crazy Adventure. How's it going, honey? It's going well, thanks for asking. Thanks. I, um, I'm really excited Christy's here. So we've been talking a lot about the things in this lesson, um, just in our own personal lives, and so I thought, you know what, honey, come talk about it some more with me, because, you know, the things that we're, we're trying to do this year as we set resolutions and, and resolve the change, you know, a lot of it is going to be focused on the Savior in our own personal lives, and so we uh, we went up to the office and we just continued the conversation with you guys. Um, this is our first week of the Howard W. Hunter Manual, which we are really excited about. Um, president Hunter was only president of the church for nine months, but he was actually an apostle for 35 years, and so while you might not think there's a lot to learn or a lot of content to pull from. There actually is very rich. And uh, I have enjoyed reading this this first chapter here. In fact, I teach I teach the second or the third Sunday of the month, um, and so I get the even numbered lessons. I'm kind of bummed that I don't get to teach this lesson, um, but I trust our other instructor Jeff will do a great job, okay. and uh, and I'm excited for that. But honey, I know you've had a lot of notes of things that you read. Why don't you share with us something that you found value out of in the lesson? Well, it was I was really excited to study Howard W. Hunter. He was actually the prophet when I was baptized. Oh, um, I didn't know that until he died. And I saw a newspaper clipping, and I clipped it out. I thought, this is really important. I probably should remember this moment, you know. Um, but as I read the article, it talked about um, how he really emphasized a Christ-like. Um, he really encouraged members to be Christ-like. And um, I've always remembered that. And that was really impressive that the newspaper would share that. And so this lesson was just perfect for him. Because, um, Christy, we, we, we didn't grow up in Utah or anything. We were in Southern California. Yeah, Orange so. County, yeah. So I grew up, I think it was from the register. I had the clipping still somewhere in a scrapbook somewhere and cut it out. And, but I pretty much have only known President Hinckley until um, President Monson, of course. Um, and I like how this message he shares here in the first section. says, It is by the power of the Holy Ghost that I bear my witness. I know of Christ's reality as if I had seen it with my eyes and heard it with my ears. I know also that the Holy Ghost will confirm the truthfulness of my witness in the heart of all those who listen with an ear of faith. And I just love that testimony from our prophet. Um, the reality of our Savior and that his role and job is to bear witness of Jesus Christ. And all of us, if we have a, I love that, with an ear of faith, that we can listen, that we can also hear and know and receive that witness for ourselves. I love that part. Yeah, President Hunter had a very strong testimony of Jesus Christ and often testified of him. Um, specifically. And I think that's such a great thing for us to start this lesson off. Um, I was, so we were gone for a week. We were at my parents' house and we visited with Christy's mom too. And I was talking with my mom after church on Sunday and she was talking about how she bore her testimony and she said, oh, you'd be so proud of me, Grady. It was simple and straightforward. And I talked about how much I love the Savior and I, and I, and I honor, you know, the sacrifice that he made. And I just thought, there you go. That's a testimony. And you know, there's lots of things we can be grateful for and a lot of things we have faith in, but that should all be focused at, at its core on our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, you know, one of the things I like about the life of, of uh, President Hunter, uh, it talks about how he loved going to Jerusalem. How he, he went there like, I think it was like several dozen times, two dozen times, I think it says, um, during his lifetime. And one of the times he was there, President James E. Faust was his traveling companion. And he talked about how much he loved the place and didn't want to leave. And one of the things that um, that President Faust recounts, he says that he would always say, let's go to the garden tomb just one more time for old time's sake. There he would sit and meditate as though he were piercing the veil between himself and the Savior. Throughout this lesson, he talks about the importance of remembering our Savior. And one part I really liked a lot was, as we declare that he is the Son of God and the reality of the fact should stir our souls more frequently. And he talks about, you know, what are we doing to remember Christ daily? You know, it's wonderful that we can take the sacrament and we can remember him. But throughout the week, what are we doing? And it kind of does, gives me a chance to pause and reflect and, and ponder and go, okay, how often am I thinking about my Savior? We had a, um, a local leader recently talk about how you know the gospel is important, but it's important that we focus on our Savior Jesus Christ, not so much of the, what you call them, the... Um, traditions of the gospel or things that we're used to as far as, you know, living the gospel and the programs that we have, but that we should really be Christ-centered. And that kind of stuck out to me. I thought, okay, what am I doing? Am I focusing on 
programs of the church or am I helping my children draw to Christ? And I should remember and always have Christ be the center of it. So I thought this, this um, declaration was really great that we should be, it should be stirring our souls more frequently as we have a testimony of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he talks about how, you know, he asks us uh, several questions about, you know, when when do you, when are you thinking about Christ? And he talks about, you know, do you think about him when you're at work? Um, you know, among other things, I just thought, you know, do I? Do I, am I, am I focusing on the Savior? Is he in, is he in my thoughts constantly? And, um, you know, not always. And so it was a, it was a good reflection to kind of ask myself, what can I do to make sure that I am more often remembering my Savior and, and the things that he's given to us? Um, and this part here talks about his personal prayer and wish for the world. So I testify that Jesus is the only true source of lasting joy and that our only lasting peace is in him. I do wish him to be our glory now, and the glory each of us yearns for individually and only prized many nations can permanently hold dear. He's our prize in time and eternity. Every other prize is final fruitlessness. It's fruitless. Every other grandeur fades with time and dissolves the elements. In the end, we may know the true joy save be in Jesus Christ. And I love, again, just the declaration of that everything's on Christ. You know, if we want peace, if we want hope, if we want lasting joy, all those things can be found on Christ. And how important it is that we share that message with everyone in the world, the message of Jesus Christ, that can change people. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, with this lesson, if you're in Relief Society, I would imagine your instructor will probably share this hymn um, during the lesson. You might even all sing it together because you guys sing in Relief Society, right? We love to sing. And uh, it's Jesus, the very thought of thee. And throughout the lesson, um, each of the sections pulls one of those verses and talks more about the words. You're not and priesthood? We sing during opening exercises. Okay. Well, I do. Okay. And maybe three other people do. Oh, yeah. um, but I sing loud enough for everybody. But uh, usually they're like, you know, ye elders of Israel and really rousing ones. Oh, okay. um, but this hymn here, I really love. It's one of my favorites. I And I, I'm, I'm partial to the sacrament hymns anyways because I think that they are so so sacred and do such a great job of helping us feel reverence uh, towards Jesus Christ and one of the so side note if you're teaching or preparing music make sure you grab that hymn for this week yes you'll want it mm -hmm. um, hear that Jeff grab mm -hmm. that hymn mm -hmm. and one of the verses that it taught it, it has in here that it shares and I, I liked it um, because when I think about the Savior Part of my, my gratitude towards him is for the resurrection, um, knowing that we can, we can live again and that we can be forgiven of our sins. Um, and that gives us hope in the world to come. But I think also an important part of that is the hope that it gives us now and the strength that it gives us to get through the trials that we have today and through his healing power of the atonement. And the verse it talks about in section two, it says, O hope of every contrite heart, O joy of all the meek, to those who fall, how kind thou art, how good to those who seek. And just to remember, you know, that we can find peace and we can find um, comfort in the atonement of Jesus Christ, that he can help us to get through the trials that we're going through and the hardships that we have. And having him be constantly on our minds can help us to accomplish that. Which goes right into our next portion. The greatest need in all the world is an act of a sincere faith in the Savior and his teachings. The part that really stood out to me was... Um, how are we supposed to act when we are offended, misunderstood, unfairly, or unkindly treated, or even sinned against? Um, and it makes me, again, I like these, these parts of the lessons that make me reflect and ponder. You know, how am I acting? Am I reflecting the teachings of my Savior Jesus Christ? You know, am I, am I offended? I do. I get offended. I have a gentle heart. And sometimes things hurt my feelings and how important it is that I need to be forgiving and I need to be understanding and I need to seek to assume the good and um, seek to help people. Yeah, that was uh, something that one of our bishops that was very wise um, told us once. Um, and he says basically just the idea that I, now you got to quote it for me from Bishop Farnsworth. Oh, I apologize, but I offended him. He goes, oh, you can never offend me. He's going to people try, but you know, it doesn't work. You know, um, how he chooses to not be offended. You know, and, and it, it, it is a conscious choice sometimes because sometimes our natural man wants to be offended. It's so easy. It wants to find a reason to be upset about something. Yeah. Um, and you can see it. I mean, you watch, you watch live tweeting during general conference and you'll, you will see the same phrase. And there are those who will love it and count it as a strength and say, I'm so thankful for Elder Holland's talk on motherhood. I really needed to hear that. And then there are others who are saying, why is he pandering towards women? He, we don't need him to tell us we're doing a good job. What about the dads? And I think that has to do with our hearts. And if we're turned towards the Savior, we will find the good and we will be blessed and we'll be happier for it. I know when I heard President Holland's talk, even as a dad, I didn't say, 
boohoo, I'm a dad, this doesn't apply to me. I thought, great. I think that moms do need to hear um, as often as they can how great they're doing. And I'm grateful for my children's mom, you know, and all that she does for them. And he said the words that were much more powerful and eloquent than I could ever give. And so I think it's important that as we have a heart that is Christ-like, as we have charity, um, we will be able to be happier because we are not seeking to be offended or letting ourselves be offended, but as well as there's peace as we forgive others of those who sinned against us. And as we study his life and his teachings, it's easier for us to apply those principles to our lives. We're in, you know, um, daily remembrance of everything that he's taught us. It's I think it's easier to do what we're supposed to. Yeah. And, you know, during this last year, we studied the New Testament in Sunday school, um, focusing on, on Jesus Christ. And this year is the Book of Mormon. Uh, and you can, just like with the third hour of power, you can follow along and um, with Jeff and his guest hosts um, at the Sunday School Bonanza. And they are going to be talking about the Book of Mormon. And the Book of Mormon also has a great emphasis on Jesus Christ and actually is, I won't compare. I will just say that I know for me personally, the Book of Mormon has given me great clarity on the nature and character of Christ and more definition in his divine mission. And it's been said, I forget the study because I'm so bad at those things, that um, Christ's name is mentioned more in the Book of Mormon than it is in the New Testament. I believe it. You were there when it was announced um, last week's in school, so you should believe it. I believe Brett Holbrook mm -hmm. and everything that he says, because his because his son has told me that Dad's not wrong. That's right. And that's a crazy other story I won't share publicly. Not right now. Um, but yes, I I agree that you know as we said at the Book of Mormon that we can draw close unto our Savior and how, what a great it is to have another testament of Jesus Christ. And I love the parts of the atonement in there and other parts of the scriptures that help to bring clarity and more understanding to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Is there anything else that stood out to you in the lesson, honey? There was, um, this part talks about challenges and trials um, in, X, in 4, it, and it compares them to the troubled waters of our lives. And um, we all have trials, we all have hard things that we go through, um, and those things are hard. It says none of us would like to think that we have no faith, but I suppose the Lord's gentle rebuke here is largely deserved. This is when he says, when they said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I have a good song to sing for this lesson. And I love that. I remember seeing that song and thinking, how could they even think that? But you're right, it's easy for us when things are going wrong, thinking, you know, our Savior, don't you care that I'm in pain? He goes on to say, this great Jehovah, in whom we say we trust and whose name is taken upon us, and the one who has created the firmament and the waters, the one who has part of the Red Sea, the one who has, you know, um, pulled water from here and there. Um, the Savior has control over everything. And we shouldn't suppose that he doesn't care about us because things are hard. And how important is that we remember when things are hard that he's there for us and that we need to continue to have faith in him and um, cling on to him more fervently and remember him um, and how important that is. So I'd want to close with. I think that's a great closing. And uh, and I think the same thing. I'm, I've asked, you know, sometimes a similar question myself when times have been hard. And, you know, it's a, it's amazing the power of the atonement. It truly is infinite. It's not just to reconcile us of our sins. It's to heal our broken hearts. And it's to help us to feel the love of our Savior and to have peace um, through the Spirit that comes with that, through the Holy Ghost. You know, um, I did want to share too is that you know, he talked about the waters um, and how he can calm the waters, and how he can remove the waters. One of our past uh, podcast guests and, and friend of, of This Week of Mormons, Kurt Frankham, he shares a um, kind of a, a good supplement for the lessons, and he shares a great object lesson. And um, I won't go into it, but I will say that the link to it will be in the show notes. And so go there and uh, and visit his site because it was a, it was pretty cool, and you want to order what he's talking about now so that it will get there in time for your lesson if you are teaching. Um, um, and also, I just want to see, um, usually I ask Christy what she has going on, but I did want to just mention um, something that I've enjoyed from your pod, your your blog. Blog website, we like to call it. A blog. A blog. Um, one of our, our listeners and, and followers of, of This Mormon Life, is, his name is Brian, and he'd emailed me the other week and asked me about Family Night, because we'd mentioned it on a previous um, episode of the podcast. He asked me what it was, and I was trying to figure out how can I respond? You know, what can I really share with someone? Because he's not a member of our faith um, who's never heard of Family Night. What can, I, what can I tell him about it that would be helpful? Um, but Christy, you had a blog post that talked about Family Night. Did you want to share just a little bit of what's found there? Well, I found that I kept mentioning Family Night and how frustrating it must be to a member of another faith who's not heard of Family Night to not know what it was. So I decided to write a blog post 
about what is a family, just to explain it. Um, and it's kind of nice because it goes over different kinds of family that you can have. You don't have to just, there's not some certain set way to have it. There's a way we like to have it, but there's lots of ways to have it. And so I try whenever I reference any kind of family night um, inside my blog post that I reference that, that blog post. They can know if they want to find out more about it. So if you want to find out more about it, you can go to Christy's site, OurCurAZAdventure.com. That's K-E-R-R. And I just posted it today, a link to it. We um, Every month I list my menus for the month and also our family night schedule. I like to try to plan out. We found we have more effective family nights when we plan out a month in advance as far as what we're teaching about. And so you can find the link in there if you click on family night and it'll tell you what it's all about. Yep. And there'll be a link to it in the show notes. So Brian, check that out or anyone else who wants to know more about family night or just wants to get some ideas to help them have more effective family nights. Mm -hmm. You can go there and check it out on my blog over at this-form-life.com. Um, I have a little bit more fun. I have a, a quiz, a personality quiz that basically asks. That's more fun than family night? Family, now you've it's got like, me in it's trouble. Like, it's like we've been waiting for, honey. I'm just saying. Uh, as long as there's a treat we have in store, okay. it'll be more fun. Okay. Otherwise, my, my quiz is more fun. Okay. My quiz is more fun for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Sounds not good. for Sunday, not for Monday. Okay. Um, but it is asking the question, what kind of Mormon are you? And there's a series of questions there that you can answer. And the quiz will do some awesome data math and tell you what kind of Mormon you are. So if you are curious and you haven't quite figured it out yet, you can go over to this-mormon-life.com and check that out and take that quiz. Um, a link to it will be in the show notes. Um, but after you're done doing that, make sure you visit our benefactors, This Week in Mormons. Um, they have their podcast every week where they talk about current events in the church um, and what members of the church at large are doing, as well as mentioned earlier, um, Sunday School Bonanza, where they are now talking about the Book of Mormon and how you can get more out of your lesson. If you have found value in this, um, let us know. I'll tell you what, emails like Brian's and like others that I've gotten and feedback that I've gotten from people, it really helps us to make sure that we keep putting this out for you and that we um, give you good content that you enjoy. So, you know, send me an email at grady at this-mormon-life.com. Leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, you know, share us on Facebook. Do something if you enjoy this to share it with others because if you've gotten value out of it or if you felt like you've gotten more out of your lesson on Sunday, you know, help others get more out of their lesson as well. Um, so thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you guys for being our hosts. And we probably should because of the topic close if you don't mind i wouldn't mind closing with our testimony right doesn't that make sense sure okay so i'll go ahead and close and share my testimony that i know our savior is the son of god and that he knows each of us and he loves us and he sees our potential and he's there for us for every heartache every sorrow every hard time every sin and that because of him we can be healed because of him we can be clean and because of him we can live again with our families forever and i say see jesus christ amen and i as well i have uh, a strong testimony of Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for him. One of the things that I want to do this year is I want to get to know him better. Um, I want to be more familiar with him, with the life that he led, the example that he gave me. Um, one of my favorite Christmas gifts I got besides our new webcam, this awesome boom for our microphone, is um, the new addition of Jesus the Christ. Um, part of my, not New Year's resolution, but how I want to be better is I want to study that and get to know him better because I know that being more Christ-like and kind brings me greater happiness. Um, as I've tried to make changes each month um, and tried to be more like my Savior, I found myself being better, and I and I like that. And I because I feel good, because I feel the Spirit um, reassure me as I do these things. I know that they're of God, and so I know that following our Savior Jesus Christ helps us to do that, and helps us to feel the peace and the joy that comes um, through Christ-like living, and also through the atonement. Um, Jesus Christ. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Annie. And until next time, we bid you all a fond adieu.